Okay, let's begin. Uh, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you again for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, it's the second session of our MicroStation live session for this year. Um, uh, we've, we've covered a few topics already. Um, this is our second session. So um, yeah, let's get, let's get started. So again, as always, um, you've got access to the control panel, um, so you can undertake audio settings, uh, look at the handouts, and um, of course, ask any questions and, and make any comments, please, as we go. Um, we'll endeavor to ask, uh, answer them as and when we progress and hopefully towards the end also. So yes, again, ask some questions, please. Um, you'll get a recording of this presentation in the next few days. Um, we'll also be posting a, a survey to ask how we've done. So please feel free to uh, partake in that as well. Um, and that's it. So yeah, as part of the MicroStation Live series for this year, um, we've arranged to cover a few basic uh, key capabilities uh, which enable MicroStation to stand out um, uh, and with its key capabilities in comparison to others and how this can be uh, best fitting with, with those of our users in industry. Um, we'll be covering topics such as DGN file capabilities at sessions today. Um, we've, uh, we'll also be um, looking at interoperability capabilities. We'll be covering intelligent sheets, 3D PDF printing, and, and various other elements within uh, the MicroStation uh, tasks. So, um, as myself, Mazum Sarakan, I come from a civil engineering background and I'm a product sales engineer here at Bentley Systems. Um, with me today, we've got two great gentlemen um, who'd perhaps like to go ahead and introduce themselves. Okay, then um, I will start. My name is uh, Dirk Boonstra, senior consultant, uh, and I'm really senior. Um, working with uh, MicroStation for a long time, actually from the beginning, and always been doing different things with MicroStation. Uh, sometimes, uh, most of the time, assisting the users, um, also training and installing, migrating and configuring, and uh, sometimes a little bit of programming. So that's the kind of things I do. And today I'll uh, talk you, to you a little bit about the native design file format. Excellent. And Michele? Go ahead, nice, thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no problem. So, Michele Bruno here speaking, the manager for AGN uh, Hogger. Uh, we are um, a consortium, so a joint venture of three companies Italian Astaldi, uh, the Turkish Gulermak, and the Swedish NRC, building um, a major infrastructure for the Swedish history, which is this West Link in, uh, yeah, in Sweden, in Gothenburg. And uh, we're going to chat a bit on the, our use of DGN format in, uh, in our working days. Excellent. Thank you very much, both of you, for, for, for taking the time out this afternoon. Um, and let's begin. So uh, I just want to pass over to um, Dirk now, who's going to run over a demo with us to see how this um, best fits and the various capabilities and how we can make the most of this uh, in our day-to-day -day usage of MicroStation. Okay, so I'll uh, share my screen. That's uh, monitor number one. Okay, um, so this is the subject for today. I have to get my notes here. Um, the design file format. Uh, actually, MicroStation can actually work in three formats. Uh, the V8 DGN format, uh, the AutoCAD DWG format, and the old MicroStation V7 format. And all these three types, you can open the files in read-write mode. You can do import, export, batch conversions, and all the kind of things. Um, on the end of my demonstration, I will talk about the options that you have about converting and not converting. But first, I want to move on to explain a little bit more about these three formats. Um, the AutoCAD format uh, is based on a release number, and it changes every three years normally. And so there are many release formats. Uh, there is also a DXF file format, which stands for the Data Exchange File Format, 
which is an ASCII formatted file. So it means it's very large, it's not binary, and usually processing is also a little bit slower. So using the DXF file format is only done when there is no alternative. Always try to use DGN or DWG and not to use the DXF, but some workflows, there's no alternative. Then the V7 file format. Well, actually there never was a V7 file format until we introduced the V8 file format in 2001 when MicroStation V8 was introduced. Uh, at that point, the format of the DGN file changed and that format we call the V8 DGN format. And for convenience, the old format that has been used before, we call that the V7 format. And this format was defined originally by Intergraph Corporation late 1970s. So that's a long time ago. Uh, but files created in that period can still be opened, read-write by MicroStation. Um, the DGN format is a native file format. And so that's what we normally use. It's the fastest. MicroStation doesn't have to do any extra things like emulations or extra calculations to work with the uh, old, uh, to work with the native format. And it does have to do that for the old format and for the AutoCAD format. It's always a little bit slower. Okay, so much about the PowerPoint because I don't want to show, show you PowerPoint. I want to show you MicroStation. So we switch over to MicroStation. Maximize it a little bit. Now, those of you who have been working with MicroStation might say, hmm, what a strange color. And that is in update 15, the one I'm working on now. Uh, it is a user preference to choose for the dark uh, theme in the user interface. And I, I switched it on uh, beginning uh, of this week, I think. So I'm a little bit getting used to it, but it is an option to choose for a dark theme. Um, I have, um, let's, let's open a, a design file um, and I will, open this design file from my history list and then I can show you what it is to work in different file formats. Um, okay, so here, here I've got a design file, a V8 design file. I can see that over here on the top of the screen that this is a V8 DGN file. And when I go to the status bar, over here, I can see that I am in the DGN work mode. And it will also tell me that now I have the full functionality of MicroStation and it's listing some of the features, which are not possible when you're in the DWG work mode or in the V7 work mode. But basically I can do now everything, no limitations. Now let's open a old V7 design file. I got some collected over here. And by the date, you can see that they are old. The oldest one I could find on my PC was from 95. And I, I can still open them. And so I just double click. It's opening. I think I have to do a fit view. Yeah, there it is. Some old topographic background with uh, some water and road features. Um, in the status bar, or let's start over here. Uh, in the top, I can see that this is a V7 DGN. And I've configured MicroStation in such a way that automatically when I open a V7, uh, there are options to say convert to V8 or open as read only, but I choose for the option uh, open the V7 file in read write mode. And so that's what I have now. I'm in the V7 work mode, but there are limitations because of the file format. In V7 format, we could have only 63 numbered levels. And they are already created over here, so I cannot create them anymore. I cannot create new models in the V7 format. You could have only one model. In V8, you can have multiple models, design, sheet, uh, drawing models. And so those are the limitations. And th that makes sense because an extra model doesn't fit into the V7 file format. It was not defined at the time. Um, I'll go back to my V8 design file and you see automatically I get back to my DGN work mode and hmm, I don't think I have an a AutoCAD file. So I quickly create an AutoCAD file by doing a save as 
later on we do that more. And I want to put them in a different folder to keep that a little bit clear. And I create a DWLG file. You see over here is also the DXF, but we don't like to use that at all. And I have options. Um, in the options, I get this dialog and there are four tabs in it. We have some general options where, for example, I can choose which release of AutoCAD I want to use. Maybe the receiving end of my drawing doesn't have the latest AutoCAD version. And then I can say, okay, I'll make a file for you in the 2010 file format. And then they can open it without any issues. There are many, many more settings. Of course, there's no time to go through all of that. Um, consider this uh, options dialog as a kind of dictionary with the grammar and spelling rules. And consider DGN and DWG as two different languages. And if you want to translate from DGN to DWG, you, you need grammar rules and you need a dictionary. And that is what you have over here. We have to tell MicroStation how to do the translation. If you don't do it, it will just take the default values and it will be pretty good. But sometimes you might want to tweak around a little bit over here to improve it. There's also a possibility for remapping where you can create an Excel file and then you can do level remapping, for example. You can state that if the level is 25 in my MicroStation file, then in AutoCAD I want it to be the level building. Because the references are treated completely differently, uh, there's also a reference stop where you can specify what to do with the reference file. Uh, just keep it, merge it, merge it as a cell, uh, attach the DGN as an underlay, and the reference as a reference, or skip it, omit it. And there are many more settings you can do over here. And then you have filtering. You can say, I want to uh, do everything, or a fence, or a selection set, and you can also filter the models. I still see I still have an old uh, one over here. And so I um, I want to export only my default model. So, okay, all the things are done. And I say save. And because I do save as, the file will be created. And once it is created, it will be opened. Yeah, so now you can see in the top that I'm in a release 2010. That's what I specified, DWLG. And in the status bar, you can see that I'm in the AutoCAD in the DWG work mode. And here are some limitations that are not possible because they are not possible in this format. So self-referencing uh, is not possible. Creating new design models is not possible. If I go to my models dialog box, create a new design, I can create a new sheet. In the AutoCAD file format, you can have multiple sheets, but there's no option for creating designs or drawings. It's just uh, disabled because it doesn't fit into it. Uh, color table editing is not possible. Oh, that's a good thing that uh, I don't like people to change all the colors. I'm a little bit colorblind anyway, so. But I, I like it to be fixed. Of, of course, people can still use different colors by using the uh, 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 by using the uh, RGB colors. It's still possible. Um, I do see over here that uh, some areas are red, and that was not in the original one. I didn't fix that, I could have done it easily, but in my few attributes, I see that the fill is switched on and in the original file, it was switched off. Uh, when creating an AutoCAD file, it is using a seed file and apparently in my seed file, for this few, the fill was switched on and then that attribute is taken, so it can easily be changed. So you can see that I can work in three work modes. I don't need to restart MicroStation or switch things. Uh, just within one session, I can open all three file types and do editing. I didn't show you the editing in the V7, but I hope you believe me. Uh, I can pick up this uh, line over here, which is a B-spine curve, and make a modification. Or I can do an insert point uh, and do something like this. I think it's a line style over here. That's why it's doing that. And I can insert a point over here and so on. And so that's a full editing. And in MicroStation, when you make changes, it is automatically saved. Within a second, these changes are saved. Um, so I showed you already export to AutoCAD. Uh, the other way around, importing can be done in, in many ways. Uh, I know at least three, but maybe there are more. 
typically microstation that you can do something in, in more than one way. Um, let's go back to, um, to the design file. I use my model back, model file back. And where I, um, I should do it like this probably. Oh, I don't see it. Uh, I'll just uh, close this file and open uh, another file. File close. And I will open the original coordinates DGN, this one. Should have been able to go model back, but I don't know. Um, so here's my design file. Now, if I want to uh, convert an AutoCAD file to a microstation, I can do that in, in three ways, and maybe I'll show you two of them. Uh, first of all, with the models, I'll remove this one because this is the one I just did for testing. Uh, I can create a new model. No, I don't have to do that. Um, yeah, I have to do that, but I can just say import a model. And then I go to the uh, AutoCAD files, got them over here, the one I just created, DWG. This is my AutoCAD file. I can choose the model that I want to import. This is the model. So I just say OK. And there it is, again, with the filled areas. But that, that's one way of getting my data. So now this data is in my design file. It is not as a reference. And again, I can modify it. Uh, I'll delete this one again and show you another way of importing. And that is by creating a new model. I, I'm in a design file, so I can create a new model. I make it a 2D. And I call this one uh, from AutoCAD, from DWG. Uh, the rest is OK. So I have a new model. It's empty. And now I can use File, Import, Import DWG. I have to select the file. Uh, yep, yeah, that's the file I want to have. And mm, because there is only one model, it has already done it. Sometimes you're waiting for something and it's not coming, but it has already done it. I'm in this new model. The data is over here and the data is not as a reference, but it has been converted to microstation elements. And I can work on it. I can modify it and do anything with it I want to do. So those are two ways of um, modifying, for importing. Uh, well, I don't know whether I have enough time, but I'll just do it. I'll create a new model and I call this one um, use references because that's what I want to do. I have a new empty model and I will attach the AutoCAD file to my new model. Let's see the other screen. Um, so I go to my, um, no, I don't want to use this one. I want to use the same file again. So I go to my AutoCAD files, this one over here. I also have options over here. Uh, for example, that I want to have a 2D model, but it's going to be 2D anyway, because the model is 2D. Uh, but you have some uh, some options over here. Um, and I open it, so it's going to attach it as a reference. Okay, I can do some settings. don't know whether I did it correct. So now it is a reference. You can see that if you put the cursor on top of it with element selection, it will say this is in reference number one. Now the nice thing which you can do now is suppose you want to be a little bit selective. And you say, I don't want to have everything. I only want to have... I wanted to have almost everything, but I don't want to have, and I use off by element, I don't want to have the parcel numbers and the house numbers. And now I use merge into master because merge into master is looking into your view and only the levels that are displayed, they are merged. So I use this one, I select my view, select view. I always find this a strange question because I have only one view open. And so guess what, which view am I gonna select? But this is kept in it because many times you have multiple views and to keep the same flow, for example, in merging, you can expect this question. Um, so now it is, uh, the elements are no longer in the reference. They're now in my active model. 
and at the same time the reference was removed because I don't need it anymore. So all kinds of possibilities over there. Um, some people might say, well, I've got thousands of V7 files or thousands of AutoCAD files and it will take me a lot of time. Well, maybe, but uh, it's very simple, basically. You have to do some settings, of course, first, but um, it is um, very easy. And I, I do it with a batch convert. So that's a, uh, that's a tool and it's batch converter. I could have prepared it and, and open a settings file, but uh, I'll just show you how it's done. First, I'm going to add the files. Um, well, it doesn't matter where I take them from. I just take uh, one. These are V7 files. You can see that because there's no preview and it says over here. So this is no preview. Uh, I just double click this one and then this name is inserted, but you can do very nice filtering over here. I can say all the files starting with a one, then any character, then .dgn. And so it's filtering on that. Um, I don't want to put them in the output folder, but I want to put them in the uh, DGN folder uh, because the output format will be uh, V8 file, so it will be a design file. That's what it says over here as well when I go for processing. You can see that these file formats is all V7 and I'm going to convert them to V8. Uh, I get the up-to-date messages now. Uh, so um, I don't want to, I think I forgot to remove them over there. So that's why I select folder out, apply it to selection, do the processing. Uh, I don't know why, I did something wrong. Anyway, uh, it will convert. And in this case, only one was converted, but it's going very fast. Uh, I must have had uh, these files already in this folder. Um, so if I go to file open and I go to my output folder, here the files are and uh, I could delete them and then uh, do it again, but I'm quite sure you believe me. So I'm just opening this file and it was a V7 file, but now I don't want to save this, but now it is a V8 file. I can see that over here, it's a V8 file and I'm in the DGN working mode and I can, it's just a normal file and it goes very quickly. And when needed, you can have conversions in between and, and set up a level remapping and everything. Um, then there's one more file I want to show you, and that is uh, a file with multiple models. I got that over here, road design. So here you can see that I have multiple models and why you can do it in MicroStation. You don't have to do it. You can still work with separate files like you do in, in AutoCAD. And because AutoCAD has the limitation that you can have only one design model. But this is just like in Excel. Sometimes you have multiple sheets for your calculations and you want to have in one XLSX file, you want to have multiple sheets. And in the same way, sometimes you want to group together your designs, your drawings. That is now possible well, now possible since 2001 that is possible to do that by using multiple models and it's, it's very convenient also for example for referencing if i want to have this model which is containing the terrain if i want to have it as a reference uh, all i need to do is just attach it and then it wasn't working correct um, because i did something wrong over there so i will do it again and do it coincident world it was on the recommended, but MicroStation does not always recommend me the best things. No, but here it is. So basically, I've got it now twice attached, and I will remove the first one, this one. I will uh, remove it. Um, oh, I want to remove it. Yes. Okay, anyway, very easy to uh, to do attaching and detaching when you have everything inside. I also know the limitation of this. Uh, if you put all your models, all your drawings of your whole project into one design file, only one person can work on it. Because when I open this design file, I can open it for read write, and the next person who tries to open can only open it for reading. And so that's the practical limitation of putting everything into one design file. But at some stage of a project, it might be useful to combine drawings and put it into one design file. 
the references will always be found and it's it's compact it's one file you send it out and everything is there um, you have to avoid round tripping uh, i'll go back to my uh, powerpoints because i have show you the things that i wanted you to show what is round tripping is that you have an AutoCAD file you convert it to microstation design file you do something on it and then you go back to AutoCAD. That, that's what we call a round trip with a design file. It can also be the other way around. But anyway, in all these workflows, you need two translations. And it gives you two opportun opportunities to lose something in these translations. Because it's not 100%. There's all, there are two different languages, two different packages. And translating 100% doesn't exist. It's only the best as possible. That is what you can reach. So avoiding conversions, translations, is the best thing you can do. And that's one of the options that you have. You can leave the file as it is, so no conversions, and but then you can say, I'm going to use it read-only, only as a reference. I don't need to make any changes on this AutoCAD or V7 data, so I just can use it as a reference. The second option is also leave it as it is, so no conversion, but you can open the file in read-write mode, like I did. I could modify the AutoCAD files, I could modify the old MicroStation files. That's also an option. Then the third option is, yes, convert these files to the DGN format. And this is advised when the data that you're dealing with is becoming your own data. You get responsible for it. It's part of your project. You'll be using it for a longer time. Uh, things will be faster, more homogeneous. Everything is in DGN format easier in the printing part and in the converting to other formats. So then I advise to use the DGN format and do the conversion. Um, more on what I've been telling you can be found, of course, in our MicroStation help file, uh, which you can access on docs.bandy.com. And the nice thing is that this online documentation is also available when you don't have MicroStation installed. And so even before installing, you can already find it. Okay, I had prepared it, but then uh, I had to reboot just before the session. Uh, so here it is, and you can just uh, choose over here the version and the language. There's also a MicroStation README, but the README is also part of uh, the README is also part of the help file, and so. If you need some information about installing MicroStation, you don't need to install it first. You can just go to docs.bendy.com, pick the language you want to use, and pick the version. There's only the last two uh, editions are over there. And then you have the README over here, and here you find, for example, everything about installation and deployment and things like that. Um, that's it for me. Any questions you can put in the chat window. And all I want to do is uh, wish you a lot of fun with uh, MicroStation. Back yeah, Joe, you, thank uh... you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for that uh, for that demonstration. Um, it's it's certainly come a long way, hasn't it, in the last. Your voice is breaking down. to make this process even simpler uh, for users or make it more seamless um, for the future releases. Hey, Maslam, are you still there? I'm sorry, I think we're having some technical issues, so apologies for that. Um, Michaela, can you confirm that you are still there? Yes, okay, I think you're on mute. Um, let me see if I can log into Maslam again. Um, Hello. Maslam, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sorry, but I think my internet has dropped. I really apologize for that. Um, is, is Dirk still with us?
I don't think so. I think okay. he's dropped. Okay, that's fine. That's not a problem. Uh, you can. Project and uh, perhaps some background about the project also. Pardon again, uh, I couldn't get you. Hello, sorry, Michele. Um, I've just passed over the presentation rights to you. Um, please, uh, if you can, yeah, if you can run through how this uh, how this topic of discussion uh, relates to you and how it's uh, assisted you on your major project in in, in Sweden. Yes, of course. So uh, uh, just to brief all people who are. In here listening. So, uh, this is an infrastructure which is strategical for Sweden. It's a train line which is then connecting directly Stockholm with Malmo, the, the first and the third city in, uh, in Sweden. And um, uh, the, probably the biggest infrastructure in uh, city and town in the last 100 years possibly will be even on the upcoming 100 years the the biggest for i would say uh, results and uh, energies uh, put in it so yes exactly gothenburg there in the west coast uh, and is uh, this is then linking uh, through gothenburg with three station so cutting through the city in three points, um, the, our company AGN is, uh, is taking two lots out of six of these, uh, two contracts out of six in these um, tenders. And uh, we are building then one of the, these three uh, stations. So um, the client tra Trafikverket, it's the, the Swedish transportation, um, uh, authority is um, producing uh, a number of design uh, files and design of, uh, of projects especially in uh, rock excavation and guess what the the file format is the gn good that's good it's good so uh, we have in our group an uh, early bird in the gen who is Venus Abadingo. She is one. She is now connected here, uh, listening to us. And um, exactly. So the red part, you see, Haga Station, and uh, oh, everything that is in red. Is, yeah, this is the part of the Haga project that we are uh, building. Beautiful area in the heart of the town. And um, yeah, so th there was a back and forth um, with um, uh, with the client, and um, uh, after the first uh, steps of trying to convert uh, files, we um, we shifted to the Gen MicroStation, and uh, we started then having all a number of um, positive. Um, events which were which are mainly dealing with um, tunneling so our tunneling part is uh, often receiving uh, uh, models and updates from the client and uh, our project is um, 3d uh, based meaning that uh, in between a 3d model and a 2d section delivered the 3D model has uh, priority in case of, um, uh, let's say, in a, uh, case of clash, in case of uh, not matching 100%. More, um, of course, the, the Swedish transportation had did, uh, has done a huge job in uh, preparing the, the uh, all the sheets and all the analysis of this project. This project is huge. Only our part is 1.5 kilometers uh, in uh, tunneling. And so it is not uh, humanly possible to analyze meter by meter. So sectioning, section by section, 
everything in the in the stage of preparing the tender in the stage of designing so um what we are doing today thanks to dgn uh format is to be able to um analyze um, everything uh, and section this model and creating a huge number of sections um and then export to all, all our formats, operative formats, you can read that we operate in SAT, in Collada, in DVG, XF, uh, NVF, NVC, NVD, TOP, all these. And um, yes, using then the, the 3D model as uh, now, only now as our uh, reference, as our source of, of primary information and not not working anymore in um, in 2d section so now we are working fully 3d thanks to microstation so um this is um the success history that um we can relate uh, regarding this uh, this way of working with um, DGN, and I think we are, are gonna even improve our use because uh, not being then uh, early birds, uh, we will have probably one more person joining than the the crew in using the tool. And uh, yes, this is all. Amazing. Um, Dirk, I just want to bring you back on board, please. Um, I have a I have a question from you from the audience, which relates to this topic, and Michele will come back to you quickly on that. Um, thank you very much for providing that uh, providing that help. Um, just one second, please. Dirk, I've got a question for you. Um, yes. It relates to your topic, and it says, uh, you know, do, um, so sorry. Give me one second. Uh, they're coming thick and fast. Is there anything on a roadmap uh, for enabling multiple users to use the same file at the same time? Um, and there's been an, a given example from this from, from, from Revit. Um, I'm not aware of the fact. I know the question, uh, having multiple people work on the same model at the same time. Uh, it used to be a project some 20 years ago, but I've never seen it. And lately I didn't hear about it. But I don't know everything what's going on, what they're cooking in our development kitchen. Uh, it, it might be keep on, keep on asking. Then uh, mm -hmm. yeah. at some point it will be possible to uh, to do it like that. Great stuff. Okay, I just want to throw that in because that's related to the topic there. Um, Michele, thank you very much for presenting that again. Um, it, it's great to see that the reliability of the file format and, of course, um, one of MicroStation's key capabilities is, is being able to um, both import and export and work on these models within the same application, as, as Dirk kindly showed us as well. So this being a, a key backbone and requirement um, and it's very common um, in industry, of course, with major infrastructure as well, where, uh, you know, the delivery partners or the asset owners um, make it a prerequisite for various file formats. And of course, on major projects, there are various parties involved which have the capabilities or not. So um, these vast teams being able to work um, flexibly um, with this kind of application is definitely a huge advantage. Um, thank you very much again uh, for, for, your, for your kind examples there. My pleasure. Um... Yeah, thanks for having me here. And um, yes, so for any other thing, I think you can can read on um, on internet as uh, as the project uh, goes forward. We'll uh, we'll keep tabs on that and then bring you back on board uh, to see how it you know finally concluded. <laughs> yeah, there is Thank some you. some roads in front. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Great stuff, great stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, please continue with uh, delivering your questions. We'll be answering these as best we can uh, towards the end uh, uh, as well. Um, so thank you all. Um, I just want to cover a final point, um, our uh, licensing arrangements and how these best work. So one of our key licensing arrangements at the moment um, is, is virtuosity subscriptions. Uh,
and these come from our easily purchased from our website on virtuosity.com uh, so these practitioner licenses uh, the way they work um, they give you of course 365 days of license usage and um, they come with keys as well for, for training times. Um, and these keys can be used towards uh, classroom activities or direct consultancy from us, from our application engineers, um, tailor training. So they're very flexible and easy to use. Um, please go ahead and scan this code you can see on your screen here. Um, this will give you a, a window of 14 days usage um, of MicroStation. Um, hopefully you can get uh, to play around with the application a bit and test yourselves these capabilities and, and, and hopefully they work for you. And yeah, thank you very much all for joining. Um, thank you for taking part. Michele, it was great to have you here. Dirk, thank you very much also. And I hope this has been valuable. Um, and yeah, the recording will be um, shown uh, in the LinkedIn group again to, uh, for, and shared for all to view. Um, again, I'm open to questions and discussions as and when they come. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, let's stay in contact for the for the coming sessions. Thank you all. Thank you for hosting this, uh, Matsum, and see you later, Lena.